Gadgets Field Trip. We're going on a visit. Inspector Gadgets Field Trip. Come on, let's go with hell. Inspector Gadgets Field Trip. What's that you ask? What is it? Inspector Gadgets Field Trip. Well, no one wants to miss it. Gadget here, swimming my way down under as we splash into the case of awesome Australia. There's a lot to explore, so let's pack our boomerangs and go, go, Gadget Field Trip. Australia. It's the largest island in the world, or the smallest continent, depending on how you look at it. Go, go, gadget map! Aha! Just as I suspected. Australia is down here, below the equator. Maybe that's why they call it Down Under. Plus, it sounds a lot better than stuck beneath. When you think of Australia, you probably think of these guys, koala bears. They're only found in this part of the world. Or maybe these kangaroos bounce to mind. But Australia is home to a lot more than just cute animals. Australia has lush rainforests, long, beautiful beaches, tall, towering mountains, and wide open deserts. But the real mysteries lie down under the surf. So let's go, go, gadget swim fins and investigate Australia's hidden underwater world. Would you believe this is the world's tallest turtle hurdle? Would you believe the most outrageous oyster obstacle? How about the most massive flounder boundary? Actually, this is Australia's Great Barrier Reef, the world's largest formation made up of living organisms. The Great Barrier Reef is made of coral, and coral is made from the skeletons of thousands of tiny marine animals called polyps. Detective sense tells me that one of the best ways to research the roaming reefs is aboard a glass bottom boat. In this very clever craft, you can stare at all the weird fish and creatures under the water without getting your gadgets wet. Well, it's time to leave the world's largest coral reef and set a course to examine the world's largest pearls. I wonder if they have the world's largest gadgets. This is where Australia's huge pearls are formed. Some of these pearls are worth over 50,000 American clams, uh, dollars. And that's for just one pearl. Let's explore. Hold on to your chest tubes because we're aboard a floating laboratory where the famous South Sea pearls are cultivated. Cultivating means giving Mother Nature a helping hand. If you have a plant, you cultivate it by watering it, making sure it's clean and providing enough light and soil. These oysters are treated with the same kind of care. 
technicians ensure that they have enough food, are regularly cleaned, and well looked after. An ordinary pearl is formed when a grain of sand or something else gets under an oyster shell and irritates it. I hate when that happens. The oyster protects itself from the annoying grain of sand by forming a shiny coat around it. After a couple of years, the shiny coat is built up and up and up until it's a shiny pearl. When you cultivate a pearl, you just make it easier for the oyster to do what it does naturally. Sand doesn't always work its way into the oyster's shell. These scientists get the pearl process started by prying the oysters open and placing a tiny round piece of mussel shell inside. The oysters are then placed in these cages and put into the warmest, most comfortable spots in the South Sea. After two years of pampering, it's time for the oyster to pay up with that perfect pearl. Technicians pry open the oyster shells and poke inside. If the process was a success, the oyster offers up a large, beautiful pearl, a miracle of nature, helped along by the wonders of science. Did you know that a single strand of giant pearls like this one was sold at a famous auction house in London? It holds a record for the most expensive string of pearls in history, selling for $2.3 million. Wow! I hope that includes a nifty carrying case. Wowzers! We're going on a treasure hunt. Hang on! Go, go, Gadget Copter! About 200 years ago, a ship called the HMS Bounty, led by legendary Captain Bly, went out on a sea voyage and never came back. Although the captain and some of his crew made it to safety, the ship was a goner. The HMS Pandora was sent to look for the wreckage of the bounty and, you guessed it, missed it by that much. Like the bounty, the Pandora never returned. The case was finally cracked when the Pandora was found here on the ocean floor. It seems the case wasn't the only thing that was cracked. Apparently, the bottom of the ship cracked when it scraped alongside our old friend, the Great Barrier Reef. You can bet Pandora's chief had a beef with that reef. Today, divers using special equipment are bringing the wreckage up from the bottom of the ocean floor. Although there was no treasure aboard this mighty vessel, finding the ship is a treasure in itself. Just down the coast is another treasure, but the loot is more of the snapping variety. Let's investigate. This is one part of Australia where you've really got to watch your fingers. This is the Crocodilius Park Crocodile Research Center in Darwin, Australia. Uh, hi, fellas. I'll just stand over here. Way over here. These crocodiles are some of the largest reptiles on Earth. What is a reptile? is a cold-blooded, air-breathing animal that usually has a protective scaly trench coat, a uh, scaly outer skin. A reptile is called cold-blooded because its body temperature changes with the temperature outside. So if it's too cold, the reptile moves somewhere warmer, and if it's too hot outside, it moves somewhere cooler. Wowzers! Looks like feeding time, and 
I'm the guest of honor. So before these crocs turn me into a bionic buffet, we'd better say good day to our new friends at the Crocodilius Park Crocodile Research Center. Let's make a run for it. Go, go, Gadget Lake! Out of breath and we're out of time. I hope our field trip through Australia was something you could really sink your teeth into. We've seen enormous shiny pearls, a giant living reef, a mysterious sunken ship, and crocs with snapping teeth. Until next time, go, go, gadget field trip.